Hello, React Native Developers. I hope you are well. William here, recording from beautiful Zoic Switzerland. So far, the relationship between gestures and animations has been somewhat simple. We get animation values from the gesture handler, we use it to express a transformation, and when the gesture ends, we either keep the state of the gestures in offset values, as if the gesture never ended, kind of, or we transition nicely back to the original state before the gesture was active. In this video, I would like us to look at an example where we cannot get away using such a technique and yet we can build an elegant solution for it. Let's have a look. Here we have the Instagram pinch to zoom example, which we built a couple of weeks ago. So I can select an area in the image, zoom in, drag it around. When we the gesture ends, we go back to scale of one and translation zero. So three states. States begins. The focal value of the pinch gesture handler is the origin of the transformation. When the gesture is active, the pinch, the focal values of the pinch gesture handler are used to do the translations. And so since we used focal value for the origin, we need to subtract the origin to the focal values we get when the gesture is active. And when the gesture ends, we transition back to the initial state. So we have our translation and we have our scale with a transformation of origin. Now, what we would like to do is to ramp up this example. And when we pinch, zoom, drag, and I release, I want to remember the state of the gesture. And when I start the gesture again, I want to remember how the image was previously transformed and apply the transformations on it. In such a scenario, what we do usually is that we keep an offset value. When the gesture ends, we store the state of the transformation. Maybe it's a scale, maybe it's a, some, some trans a translation to the animation value. When we start again the gesture, we remembered where we were. Here, because the transformation is a bit more complex, we have a bunch of translates, we have a scale transformation, and because of the transform origin, we have after that uh, translation. Calculating these offset values is going to be a little bit more tricky. Before we do that, I just want to quickly talk about vectors. So here, because everything we do in X, we need to do in Y. I have, I'm using these helper functions from Redash, so create value, which is equivalent to x new value 0 and y new value 0. So here I can create vectors of animation values. And so you see here focal x, we bind to focal.x, focal y, we bind to focal.y. And here we can also do some basic operations. So here we subtract two vectors. So this expression is equivalent to x is sub of focal x minus center x and same for y. So we have sub, we have set, which is also, again, just a shortcut to set a vector of animation values. So it's equivalent to this expression. So just a nice uh, shortcut. It's uh, pretty convenient also if you want to build things quickly and debug things, you can write, instead of doing the code for x and y every time, you can do these things a little bit more quickly and it's less verbose. And then here we are also using uh, some helper functions from Redash. So translate of a vector is equivalent to translate x pinch x, translate y pinch y. And then we have uh, the transform origin, which is 
So this expression is equivalent to translate the origin. We do the scale transformation and then we translate back. So would be uh, multiply minus one something like this and so yes so just a nice uh, helper function and here it's hard to decipher when but when it's written translate transform origin it's a little bit clearer so now when the gesture ends what we want to do is to keep an offset value that will remember the state of the transformation. And when we start the gesture again, we want to seamlessly transform on the already transformed image. So what we're going to do here is because we have translations, scale, and then translation, we're going to need to simplify this transformation into uh, two primitives. Here, we are very lucky. It's not so complex. So we just have translation and scales. So we can express it just using a translation and a scale transformation. So here, let me first rewrite this one. So this one is translate of the pinch vector. This one is translate of the origin vector. Then we have the scale transformation and then we translate to origin multiplied so vector multiply origin by minus one up let's have a look okay looks good now what we want to do is to simplify further so here we can add these two up, so pinch and origin. So I'm going to do vector add is pinch plus origin. And now because we want, we only want one translation, one scale, so we can have only one scale offset and one translation offset. This is what we're trying to do. So. I need to move this one up, so to have only one translation. And so intuitively, we basically can add this value multiplied by scale, right? Because when we execute this transformation, the image has been scaled. This is just, you can come up with it intuitively. There is a way we can you can mathematically uh, come up with it is by, uh, expressing the transformation matrix of these transformations multiply it by the transformation matrix of the scale and that will give you the uh, uh, end matrix and you can express it with a translation and a scale so here i'm gonna translate so i'm gonna add it to the translation but we multiply the value by scale And so this is should be exactly the same transformation than before. It's the same, but because we have now only one translation, only one scale, it's going to be easier to keep track of the state of the transformation when we release the gesture. So now that we have simplified the transformation, we can create a scale offset and an offset for the translation. So I'm going to create a value called scale offset. Default value is one and a offset. So for the translation, so it's a vector and of animation values, default values zero. Now, when we um, release the gesture, We, no, sorry. 
we have these offsets. So we need to add the offsets to the transformation. So scale. So the translate offset adds to the translation and the scale offset is multiplied. That's why also the default value is zero for the translation, one for the offset, for the scale. So here I'm gonna multiply scale offset by scale, and we add offset to the translate. So here nothing should change because these values are not set yet. When the gesture ends, we, so first thing I'm gonna do here is to set, because we're gonna need to this uh, add of vectors, we're gonna use it in a couple of places. So I'm gonna factorize it into a variable called translation. So I'm gonna create, so actually I'm gonna create a vector called translation because, so if I write, oh, sorry. So these are the values I want to add. And I want to make sure that, so I can write translation equals this expression. So it's a vector addition of all these elements. And what I want to do is to make sure that this expression is evaluated for every frame. So I'm gonna move it into the block. So I'm gonna create a vector of zero, zero. And the reason here I need to move it into the block is when we need to um, reset the animation value. So I need to be able to set the translation to zero. So I'm gonna, so that's why I need it to be uh, animation value and not an, an animation node. So we're gonna use a vector set of translation to this expression. And when the gesture ends, we can set, so vector set of the offset vector to be um, to be offset plus translation. No, to be the, to be the translation. So I'm gonna do vector add offset plus translation. The scale offset. So we do set. of scale offset, we multiply scale by scale offset. And then we need to set the scale and translation to one and zero respectively. So I'm gonna uh, set scale to one, the translation to zero and we can also set the um, animation values of the gesture back to zero. So set focal zero. And by the way, when I do set focal zero, it's equivalent to, uh, so it sets the value zero for the X and Y component. So set focal zero, set scale, one and um, set pinch to zero. So, okay, this one is a scalar value and we have a syntax error. So now when I release the gesture, if we've set the offset values properly, the um, when I release the gesture, the image shouldn't move because we've swapped values, but the offsets 
is uh, makes it that the state of the transformation is preserved. Now, if I move again, you see now it's kind of broken. So when I release the gesture, it sorry. Up. When I release the gesture, it never moves again because we swap the offset values properly. But you can tell that, so let's say if I select this area, zoom in, you can tell that now the zoom is out of whack and the translation as well. And this is because in our code, we've made some assumption about the uh, Canva. We were applying the transformation to. And now because the image is transformed, we need to adjust for it. And one assumption we've made is that we said the default origin of transformation is the center of the Canva. So we have uh, width the vector, which is width divided by two and uh, height divided by two. Now it's not the case anymore because we translated by offset. So we need to adjust by adding the offset to the vector. That gives us the uh, default origin of the transformation, which we can uh, remove to the, which we can subtract to the focal value like we did. So here I'm going to add offset. Let's have a look. So I zoom in, move around, and now let me select an area. Pinch, and you see, pinch nicely. I can move it around. And when I release, the image doesn't move. Guys, before wishing you a happy hacking, I would like to let you know about my online course on declarative gestures and animations at startreactnative.dev. If you are interested to learn the fundamentals of gestures and animations in React Native, I recommend you check it out. My goal with this course is to provide you with all the tools and knowledge necessary in order for you to build incredible user experiences in React Native that will run at 60 FPS even on low-grade Android devices. By following this curriculum, the recipes we tackle in the Can It Be Done in React Native series should feel trivial to you. So if you are interested, I hope you check it out. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this example. When building complex user interactions in React Native, I like to find intermediary examples along the way. The Instagram pinch to zoom feature was a perfect example because when releasing the gesture, we transitioned nicely back to the initial state. So we didn't have to account for the transformation, save it into proper offset values, and also when expressing the transformation, account for this offset value, which is what we've done uh, in this video. We've ramped up the example. This is not the last pinch to zoom feature we're gonna build together. What we've done today, we're gonna ramp it up again in the near future. So I'm really looking forward to talk to you soon. And in the meantime, happy hacking.